Okay, welcome back. Uh, in lecture one, part two of the antineoplastic. We've been discussing the drugs acting directly on nucleic acid. Right? Previous lecture, we discussed the intercalating agents. That one is gone, and I will keep the alkylating and methylating agents to the part three. So in this part, in part two, we're gonna be talking about the non-intercalating agents which inhibit the action of topoisomerase enzymes on DNA, the podophyllotoxins and the camptothecines. Also, we're gonna be talking about chain cutters and antisense therapy okay table okay the non intercalating agents which inhibit action of topoisomerase enzymes the following structures are classed as poisons they call them topoisomerase enzyme poisons rather than inhibitors why because they stabilize the normally transient cleavable complex that is formed between DNA and topoisomerase enzyme. Okay, we already have or we have already mentioned some topoisomerase poison like the doxorubicin. And okay, what's this? The other one that we mentioned, I will let you. Look it up, okay? All right. We look at topoisomerase poisons which do not intercalate into DNA. Okay, so doxorubicin, it is, and it is a topoisomerase poison, but it intercalate first. So it intercalate into DNA, it bound into DNA, then it poison, or it stop topoisomerase these structures does not intercalate or do not intercalate into the dna okay but because as dna is part of the target complex because it is going to form a complex the dna drug topoisomerase complex so we can view these poisons as targeting dna all right, let's go on. So, examples on these are the etoposide and teniposide, okay, which are natural compounds, belongs to a group of compounds called the podophyllotoxins, okay. You can see from the figure the structure for the etoposide and the teniposide, okay. Sorry, they are, these are not natural. These are semi-synthetic or semi-synthetic derivatives. And I think by because you are in fourth stage, you know what do we mean by natural compounds, semi-synthetic compounds, and synthetic compounds. You should know these things. So etoposide and teniposide, these are semi-synthetic derivatives of epipodophyllotoxins. Okay? What is the epipodophyllotoxin? It is an isomer of a naturally occurring agent called the podophyllotoxin. Okay. So, this is the structure of the podophyllotoxin. Right? You see this bond here at carbon number 4. Okay, look at the direction of the bond. It, is go, it goes inside the plane of the paper. Okay, if we look at the figure that is drawn on a paper, so this bond goes below the paper, the plane of the paper. Okay, the epi isomer, the epipodophyllotoxin, has this bond that is going outside the plane of the paper. 
That's why we call this one an EP isomer of the natural product, which is the podophyllo toxin. Okay. The etoposide and the tenoposide are potent anti-cancer agents. Okay. They act by stabilizing the covenant intermediate formed between DNA and topoisomerase 2. All right. They are just like what? Just like doxorubicin, but these doesn't intercalate. Okay. They also produce strand breakage by free radical production. Also, just like doxorubicin. Right. Okay. The free radical involving the oxidation of the phenol group at the 4 prime, this group. This will be oxidized. This will form a double bond to the oxygen. Then this will form or will interact with oxygen at the DNA and forms the reactive oxygen species, the free radical. All right. This will, as we said, it will produce a semiquinone free radical. And it is important to mention here that tenoposide is less polar than etoposide because tenoposide has a ring here at the R group. Okay, so it is less polar. It can cross cell membrane more easily, so it is more, have more toxicity, so it's more active than etoposide. All right. One thing that's important to mention here that the drugs show selectivity for cancer cells. Okay. Despite the fact that topoisomerase enzyme is present in cancer cells and normal cells but these drugs show selectivity for top for cancer cells because top isomerase is more active so the activity of top isomerase is more in cancer cells it is more than the activity in normal cells okay and also as you can see, the glucoside sugar moiety here also increase the ability to induce breakage. Okay, so it's not only the the four prime phenol, but also the sugar, the glycoside sugar moiety also increase the ability to induce breaks. Okay. As we said, tenoposide is less polar and can cross cell membranes more easily, so it is more readily taken up by cell and has greater cytotoxic effects. All right. Other exa examples are the camptothecines uh, or camptothecine. As you can see from the structure, these stabilize the cleavable complex formed between DNA and topoisomerase 1. Okay. The podophyllotoxins stabilize the complex that's formed between DNA and topoisomerase 2. These stabilize the complex between DNA and topoisomerase 1. Okay. Now the question is how many type or of topoisomerase there are? I'll give you a hint. There are two in a human and two in bacteria. You can I think you should look them up because you have the anti cancer and the antibiotic in this course. So you should look up the Top isomerase enzymes. Okay. The camptothecine 
show selectivity for cancer cell over normal cells just like the podophilotoxin when the cancer cell because the cancer cell show higher level of topoisomerase 1 or higher activity of topoisomerase 1 and that is also applied for the podophilotoxin okay all right the lactone group which is this group is important for activity sorry for activity okay but at blood ph this lactone group is in equilibrium with the less active ring open carboxylate structure so you can imagine this bond breaks or this one and that will form an open ring carboxylate structure which is less active because for activity we need the lactone group all right Irinotican and topotican are other examples of camptothecene. The problem with camptothecene is not soluble. You see the structure. The irinotican and the topotican, you can see the functional group in the figure. They are clinically useful, semi-synthetic analogs of camptothecene. So camptothecene is the natural product. These are the semi-synthetic or the semi-synthetic analogs. All right. Irinotican, as you can see here, it is a urethane product that is converted to the active phenol, SN38, by the action of enzymes carboxyl esterases inside the body. It is important to mention that irinotican and topotican retain the important lactone group, okay, and were designed to have aqueous solubility by adding suitable polar functional groups, such as alcohols like this and amines like that you can see here this is a prodrug that also has alcohol and amines all right okay before i go further i just want to remind you that we are going to have a quiz next week the quiz will be from lecture one part one and this one this part lecture one part two okay all right chain cutters so we are done with the drugs that act on topoisomerase we are going to move to chain cutters chain cutters as the name just like the name implies cut the strands of DNA and prevent the enzyme DNA ligase from repairing the damage. Okay. What anti-cancer agent that we discussed in part one do the same thing? Cuts the DNA and prevent ligase from repairing the damage. I will leave you to, to look it up and think about it. Chain cutters, they act by creating free radicals on the DNA structure. Examples on chain cutters, we can consider doxorubicin as example of chain cutter. But doxorubicin does not prevent the enzyme ligase from action. And the other one that I asked you about also is could be considered as another example of chain cutters. Okay, 
the example here that you can see in front of you is the Kali Chiamycin. Well, a long name for a big molecule, Kali Chiamycin Gamma 1, which is an anti tumor agent that was isolated from a bacterium. All right, another um, natural product. And this one is an extremely potent agent. Okay. It is one of the structures that being studied in the design of antibody drug conjugates. And we will talk about the antibody drug conjugates in the lectures to come. It is important to mention here that radicals react. We said that they act by creating free radicals. Okay, so those radicals react with oxygen to form peroxy species or the oxy the reactive oxygen species, and the DNA chain fragments. Okay. I think you have enough time to think about what example that we discussed in the first part that is also considered a chain cut. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you. It's bleomycin, it also acts as chain cutter, and podophyllotoxins also act as chain cutters. So, what is the mechanism of action of the calciamycin gamma 1? And as I mentioned earlier, or I think in the first part, as students at the College of Pharmacy, I think you like the mechanism of action. Or you don't like it, I don't know. Anyway, the driving force behind the reaction mechanism is the formation of an aromatic ring this aromatic ring so why this is considered the driving force because as you know aromatic rings are stable and everything in nature goes toward stability stable stabilization always is the driving force not well not always but most of the time so their action start with a nucleophile this attacking the trisulfide one two three sulfur at the trisulfide group at the culture mice okay the thiol which is freed Okay, then undergoes an intramolecular Michael addition with the reactive alpha beta unsaturated ketone. As you can see here, this freed because the nucleophile will attack the sulfur, this will break that bond, this bond and as you can see in the arrow, this one will attack the reactive alpha beta unsaturated ketone. This is the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Okay, resulting in an intermediate. This intermediate, okay will cyclo aromatize in a reaction known as the Bergman cyclization this reaction here so Michael addition will give us the intermediate and this one then it will goes to the aromatic Compound. Okay. This aromatic diradical, as you can see here, let me erase this. 
the aromatic dye radical okay species will snatch or abstract two hydrogens from DNA as the result the DNA becomes a di radical or what is called di radical DNA and the reaction with oxygen then leads to chain cutting and well first reaction with oxygen will lead to oxidative reactive oxygen species that will lead to oxidative cleavage or chain cutting I hope you understand this mechanism all right the last thing that we are going to discuss in this part part two from lecture one is the antisense therapy okay. as you know our DNA will undergo transcription that will form messenger RNA then messenger RNA will undergo translation to form protein so the idea of the antisense oligonucleotides or the antisense therapy is that we bring an oligonucleotide and I think that by now you know what do we mean by oligonucleotides so we make oligonucleotide that can base pair or complement the messenger RNA okay this part so it bind to the messenger RNA and that will form a double strand which will prevent the ribosomes from acting on the messenger RNA and forming proteins example is the oblimercine which consists of 18 deoxynucleotides that are linked by a phosphorothioate backbone okay why phosphorothioate backbone because it is resistant or more resistant to hydrolysis it binds to the initiation codon of the messenger RNA molecule carrying the genetics instructions for BCL2 okay what is BCL2 and what BCL2 do that is why I asked you to read the intro introduction to know what are these enzymes and what those do okay this one is currently being tested in phase three clinical trials in combination with the anti-cancer drugs docetaxel and arenotica and I will stop now and I will not upload the third part this week I will keep the part three for next week okay because this is your first week and it's Ramadan so I will keep it for next week but remember you have a quiz next week and the quiz will be at the last 15 minutes of your lecture so your lecture should start at Monday 10:30. so the quiz will be Monday from 11:15 until 11:30. okay you will have a quiz for 15 minutes and bye-bye